Vertical aerospace. This is a big one. We have heard from many of you, you want interviews with vertical aerospace. I can tell you the Hossel brothers are in direct communication with them and we're hoping to get a lot of the line. But we thought today what we'd do would share everything we know about vertical aerospace and just our thoughts on it. Are they going to be the next Joby and Archer Aviation? Race. What are your thoughts on vertical aerospace? What do you know about the company? So I think we need to start off with the aircraft, the VTOL that they are designing and planning to put out onto the market. So it's called the VX4. It goes 150 miles per hour, very similar to the midnight aircraft. And looking at the design, it is impressive. I know me and uh, me and Liam were really appreciating it there when we seen it earlier. And uh, we are going to show that later on in the video. So make sure you stick around for that. But in terms of vertical aerospace, uh, I think we've seen on many of our live streams, lots of you calling out for us to go and uh, have a bit of a deep dive into it. And I think that's probably something for another video. Um, but this one, we're just going to do a look at an overview of the company, just so that everyone gets a bit of a feel of it. Um, in terms of vertical aerospace, what's your, uh, your feelings on it at the moment? Yeah, so we know Vertical Aerospace, they're based in Bristol, and I think it's a little bit mad because myself based in Ireland and you're based in the UK, like, why aren't we talking more about Vertical Aerospace? And guys, I just want to ask you one question right now. If you've ever heard of Vertical Aerospace, please hit that like button, because it's very surprising the amount of people that not only know about Vertical Aerospace, there's a surprising amount of people in the VTOL retail section that don't know about vertical aerospace. And I think this will be a nice video to sort of clear up some of the basic information about them and then what we hope to achieve in an interview with vertical. But without further ado, I think it's time yes. to jump across to the stock price and then we'll talk about a little bit about the financials and then are there any contracts going on? And then we can have a dive into that VX4 you've been talking about. So we'll get right across to it. So guys, Vertical Aerospace is currently trading at $3.43. Now, some of you are going to say, look, it's about half the price of Joby at the moment. And this is where it's a misconception with new investors. When you're trying to value a company, you need to look at the market cap. And looking at the market cap, it's around 290 million. Now, if you compare that to the likes of Hover, Hover's market cap is around 13 million. So if you think about it, we're more or less 20 times the valuation. But some of the things you're going to be thinking about is what is their operational expenses? Well, we've done a bit of a dive into that, and we're talking about 20 million British pounds. How much cash do we have on the balance sheet? We're just over the 50 million, but don't let that put you off. Vertical Aerospace have a order backlog of 5.4 billion. And this is where it gets interesting. So this order backlog is from the likes of American Airlines and Rolls Royce. They're not some Mickey Mouse companies. And Reese, this is where I want to ask you a question. With a 5.4 billion backlog, the likes of American Airlines, the likes of Rolls-Royce, where can you sort of see this company going? And could it potentially be the next Archer or Joby Aviation, considering the market cap? I think it's uh, very interesting um, that they are in with such big players and yeah, I think there is uh, comparisons that you can draw between the two. Um, obviously, we know that United Airlines and Arch are already partnered up. So United Airlines are already showing a lot of interest in the VTOL space. Um, and I do think that very similar to a rising tide rises all boats. So the bigger the VTOL community gets, if Joby and Archer are getting more funding and investment, then it would mean that there's more investor confidence meaning that vertical aerospace are able to get more investments through and more funding to help them get to the part certification, very similar to Archer and Joby. 
Um, I think all the way through this video, we're probably going to be able to draw comparisons between Archer and Joby. Um, and for them, I think that's where they'd want to be. They'd want to be competing with the likes of Archer, with the likes of Joby, because at the moment, they're the big players in this industry. Yeah, so what I found very interesting, I'm going to make a quick comparison with Archer's Midnight. So earlier on, Reese talked about the VX4. So I'm going to fill you in on a little bit more information. So with the VX4, it's a four-seater eVTOL, and it holds one pilot. Now, that is very similar to Archer's Midnight. However, Archer's Midnight, we can more or less say that it's valued at 5 million. Now, it's very easy to work out how much vertical aerospace VX4 is valued at. So we have that 5.4 billion backlog, and we've 1,350 aircraft on the order book. So therefore, the VX4 is valued at 4 million. Now, Reese, this is where I want to sort of throw it back to you. It's 1 million cheaper. So that's around 20%. Why wouldn't you use the VX4 in comparison to Archer's Midnight? We can say Archer will be there first. We know Archer has the likes of the partnerships with Palantir, and they're going to scale up massively. Yeah. But is this a string to the bow of vertical aerospace that they're priced so much less, yet they have partnerships with the likes of Rolls-Royce, American Airlines? Yeah, um, I think obviously it's good that they have been very competitive with their price and it will give them the edge in the market. But I would like them maybe to price it a little bit more because we know what it's like in terms of this research and development. You need to be getting that revenue in whilst you're making these losses you want to try and get as much as you can. Um, and there might be a possibility where they can do a very a very similar deal as Archer, as the Abu Dhabi Aviation, where they can sell a craft or two to one of these other nations. And that will help generate some revenue whilst they're still in this R&D phase. And I think another thing we need to bring up is their timeframes are pushed back a little bit more, but that might make it a bit more realistic in terms of their current market cap. And they've been saying around 2028 is when they'll be looking for their part certification. So I think the fact that they've given that like slightly further time horizon, but it will mean that they can take their time, get over the line. And if Joby are true to their word, there is a possibility that Joby might be able to come over here, speak to the aviation authority in England and sort of path the way for the regulations and that might aid them because it will give them some sort of guardrails that they know how their design has to go um i'd actually really like to know in our interview what they sort of think about that deal with joby do they see that as direct competition or are they sort of encouraging it because it will bring eyes to the ev toll space and it's one of those things that it can help it with the consumer adoption yeah, it's interesting that you say that, and it kind of brings me on to the next point. So we have the likes of Joby Aviation with Virgin Atlantic coming in. However, the S4 looks very, very different to the likes of the VX4. Like, yeah. we have our whole community commending Archer on their design. No. Sorry, guys. But if we're talking about military design, Oh, this is a cracker. I think this is next level. I think it's the right time to show this. Yeah. So this is what the VX4 looks like. Reese, is it just me, or does this look like a military aircraft? Oh, it does. It looks like it looks very cool. I think there's uh, Cole and Dylan will really appreciate this, because I know they love the Midnight aircraft, and this is just my opinion, but this looks a lot better. Um, the only query that I might have with it is with the windows i just want to know are they going to integrate some windows because part of the experience of the ev toll would be what's your fly and you want to see the sights you want to see the views like um, does it look too military it might be it might cause a bit of fuss in terms of uh trying to integrate it with like an urban setting but for me i think it looks uh, it looks awesome it does look very cool like that's one thing i would love to ask 
vertical aerospace is is this more or less their final design is they're going to be windows integrated and do you know what it is i just really want this interview with vertical aerospace because i'm going to be dead honest guys we're not invested in vertical at the moment and that's not because we don't like the company the only reason we're not invested in vertical and i think it's a big reason why the majority of retail investors aren't invested in vertical is there just isn't that much information out there about them. Yeah. And I just think having an interview with them, having them clarify some of these minor queries that many of us may have, I just think I could get behind this. Like looking yeah. at this design, I just think, will they go after the likes of military contracts? Because that looks solid. It and does. do you know what? Even if there's no windows, I would fly in that because that looks like the next generation of technology. What are your thoughts? Don't you, don't you think that uh, if someone said you can pay seventy pound and you get to tra like travel in that um, in that aircraft, you're going to tell me no, no way? I would I'd pay that every day. It does look it just looks unreal, um, and I think from a PR point of view, posting photos and stuff like that will be easy. And I think they'll get a lot of uh, males predominantly just because of like, it does look like a military vehicle. And the fact that it looks like that, you're going to get a, a very large male base just in terms of uh, big machinery that looks like a military grade aircraft. Like, that's the thing. I think this is my not worry but it's like it's just my little frustration i have with the likes of vertical because that looks beautiful like <laughs> i would fly in that and the thing is i would throw money at this at the moment to invest in if i knew more about the project more about the plan like at the moment i just feel like both myself and yourself dive very heavy into the likes of Archer and Joby and I feel like the whole community do and I feel like if we even understood this at a fundamental level I yeah. just I could see loads of members of our community investing in the likes of Vertical and guys please let me know are you invested in Vertical Aerospace and if so why are you invested and another thing if you're not invested in Vertical Please tell me why. And I've one last question for you too. If we do get an interview with Vertical, what question would you like us to ask them? Please let me know. And if you're an eVTOL enthusiast, make sure to check out eVTOL Weekly to stay up to date.